In this video, I'll be sharing with you intermediate Git and GitHub features and demonstrating how to use this software in a professional environment. Specifically, I'll be discussing the proper way to create a pull request and contribute to a repository, how to fix conflicts, the difference between a rebase and a merge, how to pull and modify existing branches, cherry picking different commits, and then how to reset history and commits and more advanced Git and GitHub features that are not typically shown. Now, this video is designed for people that have some familiarity with Git, but if you're a beginner or just need a refresher, then feel free to check out the video that I'm gonna put on the screen, which will give you the fundamentals you need to then go through this video. Lastly, I'm happy to mention that this video is sponsored by Microsoft who helped me develop this video. And on May 9th, we'll be hosting a 45 minute long webinar as a part of the developer digital meetup tour. This webinar will go much more in depth on this topic and teach you about advanced developer workflows while also including a live Q&A session at the end. To register for the webinar, go to aka.ms slash techwithtim or click the link in the description. With that said, let's dive into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So in front of me, I have a sample GitHub repository. And what I'm going to do in this section of the video is demonstrate to you how to correctly create a pull request and contribute to a repository. Now, this is going to be more applicable if you're working in a team environment with multiple developers or for a company. If you're just working on your own kind of solo Git repository or GitHub repository, this isn't going to be super applicable and you don't need to follow these steps. But whenever you're working with more than one developer, you're going to want to do what I'm outlining here just to keep everything clean and kind of best practice. So first thing to understand here when we're looking at this repository, if I can open it back up, is that we have a branch called main or in some instances is going to be called master. Now you can see this is the default branch. Now your main branch in most instances is going to be the branch that you want to have clean, reviewed and finalized functioning code on. What that means is that you don't want to be directly contributing work that's not finished to the main or master branch. You want to be doing essentially all of your dev work on an, a kind of additional branch, so a feature branch. And then once you've finished a completed feature or bug fix or whatever it may be, then you're going to merge that onto the main or master branch. So in most uh, repositories, your main or master branch is going to be locked, which means unless you're a, I guess you would call this an admin of the repository, you're not able to actually directly contribute to this branch. Instead, what you need to do is work on an additional branch that is forked off of the main or master branch and then merge it onto the master branch or main branch once it's been reviewed and your code is completed, tested and functioning. So just keep that in mind, your main branch, you want to always be kind of production ready to some extent uh, and always fully functioning so that additional people can always revert back to the main branch and know this is kind of the current uh, version of the repository, the current up to date state, whereas all these other branches are works in progress that are eventually going to be contributed onto the main or master branch. All right, so with all of that said, let's actually get into an example of making a contribution then to this repository, keeping in mind that we want to do our work on an additional branch and then eventually merge it into this main branch. OK, so I've opened this repository here in Visual Studio Code and I want to start uh, creating a feature. I want to start adding some code. Now, obviously, I'll just do something simple for this video. Uh, but what is the process to do this? Well, the first thing I always do is I check what branch I'm currently on by typing git branch. In this case, I'm on the main branch. That's what I want to be on. And what I like to do before I start working or creating a new branch or feature is I like to make sure that my local repository is up to date with the remote repository. This is just going to save me a ton of headaches in the future. So what I do is I type git pull. When I do that, that's going to pull all of the changes from the remote repository to my local repository and keep my local version of the main or master branch up to date. So what I'm trying to do locally is always keep this main branch up to date with the remote repository. You know, every day I like to make a pull, something along those lines, so that whenever I decide to fork off of main, I'm not forking too far kind of in the past and I have a very up to date version of the code base. There's different ways to do this, but this is what I like to do. Now, you may have to actually fully type out git pull origin and then whatever the branch name is. In this case, it's going to be main. It's going to do the same thing here. In my case, the git pull command is just automatically set up to pull from this main branch when I'm on that branch. OK, so now I'm fully up to date with the remote repository. Uh, and what I'm going to do is create a new branch. So I'm going to type git checkout hyphen B standing for a new branch. And then I'm going to give this a name. 
Now, when you name a branch, it's typically a good idea to give it some kind of unique prefix uh, that is specific to you so that you don't accidentally name a branch the same thing that someone else has named that's eventually going to push it to the repository. So what I'll do typically is something like git checkout hyphen b and then tim and in this case i'll say feature now obviously whatever the feature name is like if this was a leaderboard or a scoring system or whatever i would name it that in this case we'll just do something generic which is feature now again the reason i use tim is because if someone else is working on a branch called feature we could have kind of conflicts and be pushing to the same uh, remote repository branch which could kind of cause some headaches so it's a good idea just to prefix your branches with your name or some unique id that no one else is going to be using all right so i'm on my new branch and now that i'm on my new branch i can go crazy I can create my new feature. So let's say my new feature is just a text file. Okay, so we'll just say feature.txt and I'll say this is a great feature. Okay, perfect. I'm going to save that. Now, obviously, we can go through our standard git commands. We can also just use the interface here in VS Code and I can add these changes to the staging area. So git add dot. Then I can make my commit. I'm going to do the commit message using hyphen M and I want to name this something meaningful that's going to be easy to review later on. So I would say added a feature dot txt file and actually it's standard practice to write this in present tense not in past tense now it doesn't really matter i don't see many people actually follow this practice but you are supposed to write this in present tense uh not past tense so add a feature dot txt file as if you're doing it kind of right now Okay, so I've done that. I've now created my commit. And now I'm at the point where I actually want to push this to GitHub. I want to get my code reviewed and then I want to contribute this to the main branch so other developers can start using this. So if I want to do this, now what I need to do is I need to push this branch. So I'm going to type git push tim dash feature. Uh, when I do that, sorry, I need to first specify the location I'm going to push to. So git push origin tim feature because origin is the remote repository I want to go to. So we're going to push to this remote repository and now you can see it's created a new branch on the remote repository called tim feature so by me simply doing this push because i had access rights to this github repository i've now created this new branch and if i click on this button and i view all branches uh, you can see that there's a tim feature branch right here and i have the option to manually click create new pull request i can also view this branch by clicking on it uh, and then view that this new file is here I also have the ability to just press this button, which is automatically being generated by GitHub, although sometimes it doesn't actually give that to you uh, based on kind of when you contribute and if you change something, all kinds of reasons why you may not see this button. So I wanted to show you manually, you can go here and then click that. Okay, so I'm going to go compare and pull request. Now we get to the pull request kind of template page. Now, typically when you get to this page, there's going to be some kind of template that you'll need to fill out depending on the organization that you're working for. And it may tell you to upload some photos or to tick some boxes or to describe the feature, whatever. You got the idea. You want to give a descriptive pull request name. Uh, and the point is that through this pull request, you may actually go back um, kind of in the future and say, okay, what did I change here? What were the changes? And you just want to have a decent name. So it's easy to find what this pull request is. So in my case, we We've done a very simple thing, which is just add a file. That's about as much description as I need to add. Then if I wanted to, I could add additional comments. Again, in this case, I don't need to do that, but it is good practice to add as much detail as you possibly can. So I'm going to click on create pull request. And now what I've done is I've created uh, my pull request. Now, this pull request will typically need to be approved depending on the settings of the GitHub repository before it's able to be merged uh, into the main branch. So in my case, I can just directly merge it in here because I'm an admin of the GitHub repository. However, if someone who was not was working on this repository, then someone like myself would have to review their pull request uh, and then approve it before they'd be able to actually merge it in. So if I go here to reviewers, if there was other people on this repository, I'd be able to select them and say request review. So that's typically what you're going to do. And then you're going to have to wait for them to come here and review the pull request. Now, in my case, I can show you an example of doing that because you may also do that for other people's pull requests. So here it says review changes. I can obviously go and look through all the changes and tick the files that I've seen. And if you had more files and directories, it would show you that setup on the left hand side. Anyways, it's quite simple here. So I'll click on review changes. Maybe I leave a comment here and I ask them why they did something a certain way. I also can select a line here, click on this plus button and then directly add a comment on this line so I can add a single comment right here. And now if you go to the conversation tab, you'll see that there's a comment 
uh, kind of discussing a specific line and then you could reply to that comment and kind of keep all your conversation on one pull request so that you have history of it and you can look at it later. You can also resolve the conversation, which means you've kind of fixed whatever they commented on. Now you'll see when I go here that it's telling me that I can't approve a request changes because I'm the author. Again, that kind of makes sense, but what I would do if this was someone else's pull request, I would review it, I would leave some comments, and then I would approve it, and then they would be able to merge. So I just want you to understand that this is the process, right? You create this pull request, and now I can merge this pull request into the repository. I'm going to delete this branch, which is typically good practice. You want to keep your branches clean that you're not using. I'm going to go back to code. And now notice that I've created a merge commit here that has merged all of this content into the main branch. So now I have my one branch. I have feature.txt on here and everything is up to date. And we can go and look at the three commits. We have our initial commit, this, and then we have the merge commit, which is actually merging all of my code from my branch into this main repository. Okay, we're almost done here. Now we go back here, okay? We're working on some other feature or maybe it's the next day we want to do some new code. So now what I want to do is I want to get check out the main branch. Remember, you always want to keep your main branch, your local copy of the main branch up to date with the remote repository. So I'm going to go to my main branch and then I'm going to type git pull and I'm going to pull down the remote changes. Now, even though I've already made these changes locally, I've only made them on my other branch. So on my Tim feature branch, not on the main branch. So I go to main, I pull that gives me the changes from the remote repository, including that merge commit. And now I can create new branches and work off this main branch to avoid any conflicts. Now you'll see that if I go get checkout, so let's go here, get checkout Tim dash feature. And I try to push this up. So git push origin and then Tim feature like this. It's going to create this new branch. Okay, so it creates this new branch. Now I'm going to go back to the GitHub repository and we are going to go here. We're going to go to Tim feature and it says it's one commit behind main. Now, the reason it's saying it's one commit behind main, even though it has the same content, is because the main branch has a merge uh, merge commit, sorry, that merge these two things in, whereas my current local copy doesn't have that merge commit. So I don't want to keep working on this branch because I could potentially be getting conflicts. Instead, what I want to be doing is creating a new branch and then working off that. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense of what I'm describing here. I'm just going to go back to the main branch though. So get checkout main. Okay. And now I would create a new branch. So git checkout hyphen B and then Tim feature two. And this is where I would do any additional changes. This branch is up to date with the main branch, meaning that whenever I make a push, I'm not going to have any conflicts. At least I shouldn't have any conflicts based on how we're doing this right now. And it should just be kind of smooth sailing to add new code to the code base. All right, so continuing here, the next thing I'm going to go through is resolving conflicts. And I'm going to kind of explain to you why a conflict occurs, because this is a point where people get very frustrated uh, and oftentimes kind of don't know how to deal with this in some kind of production environment or, you know, kind of workplace team environment. So what I'm going to do here is essentially create a conflict. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to look at the current status of my uh, repository. So it says I'm on Tim feature two. So what I'm going to do is check out the main branch again. I'm going to pull to update. Everything's up to date. OK, and now I'm going to delete these two branches that I don't need just so that I don't get confused and accidentally use them uh, throughout this section. So I'm going to type git branch hyphen capital D and then I'm going to go Tim feature. That's going to delete that branch. And then I'll do the same thing with Tim feature two. All right, so now let's create a conflict. So let's clear. Let's go get checkout hyphen B Tim dash uh, and we'll just go C1 for conflict one. And all I'm going to do here is go to this file and I'm just going to delete this line. OK, so I've deleted that line here. Now I'm going to go get add dot get commit hyphen M delete line in and then feature dot txt. OK, and then I'm going to push this up to GitHub. Now you'll see in a second kind of how I create the conflict. For now, though, all I'm doing is just making a change to the repository, which is not going to cause a conflict. OK, so I've gone here uh, and you can see that now I have Tim C1 and I can create a pull request. So I'm going to do that, create pull request, and I'm going to create that. Now, for now, I'll just leave this on the repository and we can merge it in later. All right. Now what I'm going to do is go get 
checkout, and then main. Now notice here that we still have the text inside of the file. Okay, so now we're gonna create a new branch. Now imagine that I was doing this as a different user. So, you know, Tim, me, just created a branch that I uh, uploaded for a pull request. That branch deleted a line. Now imagine some other developer is checking out a branch from their local main copy. They don't have that deleted line because that was worked on on a separate branch. And now what they're gonna do is maybe modify this line or they're gonna modify this file in some way. This is kind of how a conflict will occur. So I go git checkout hyphen B, I'm gonna go Tim C2 for conflict two. Okay, and here, all I'm gonna do is say, this is a great feature, Tim is the best, uh, just two true statements on one line. Okay, so now that I've done this, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna push this up for a pull request. I'm gonna go git push origin and then Tim C2. So essentially what I've done here is I've created two separate branches each branch has made a change on the same file, and in this case, on the same line. So what that means is that there's conflicting changes on both of these branches. So I'm gonna go back here uh, to pull requests. Let's go to code. Let's go to our branches, Tim C2, and let's create a pull request. Uh, okay, for some reason, uh, apologies for the cut here. I realized I forgot to make my commit. So I'm gonna go get add dot, get commit, hyphen M, I'm just gonna go with a simple one like make changes. And now I'm gonna push this again back up to the repository so that now I will see it here. Okay, so sim Tim C2 has changes. So let's go here and make changes. Okay, so we've created two pull requests and you'll notice that on both of these pull requests right now, everything's completely fine. I can merge them in because all I've done is made a change to one of the lines. In this case, I've deleted the line. Okay, and then on my other pull request here, I have simply added to the line. So what I'm gonna do is just pick any of the pull requests, it doesn't matter which one I pick here, and I'm gonna make a change. Okay, so I'm gonna confirm this. Uh, now this is the file that is adding to the line. Okay, so let's confirm this merge. All right, and check that in. Okay, now this is in, I'm gonna delete this branch. And what you're gonna see is when I go back here, now all of a sudden it's gonna show me that I have a conflict. Now the reason it's telling me I have a conflict is that the change that I've made here is trying to change the same line that was just changed in the previous pull request, but on a different version of the file. Now I know this seems kind of strange, but essentially both of these branches were kind of merged or sorry, forked off of the main branch at the same time. So two minutes ago, I created these two new branches. They both modified the same version of a file. And now I've checked, it's called checking in, but I've merged one of these file changes into the main repository but this branch was making a change to a previous version of that file. So it was making a change to a version different than what is now inside of the repository. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, but the actual definition here of when a merge conflict occurs is when people make different changes to the same line or the same file, or when one person edits a file and another person deletes the same file. So that's exactly what's happening here. We're editing the same line and the same file and Git doesn't know what version of the file to take. So we have to resolve these conflicts. Now we can do this in Visual Studio Code, or we can do this here on GitHub. All right, so now that I'm inside of this file, I'll quickly explain what this syntax means. So in between these two symbols here, where it says main and it shows all of the equal signs, this is what's currently on the GitHub repository, okay? This is what's currently here. And then this, um, kind of weird because I've deleted a line, but this is what's on this branch. So essentially what it needs me to do here is delete all of these symbols that have been added in. Now I can put anything I want in this file, but it needs these symbols to be removed before it's gonna tell me that I've marked or before it's going to allow me, sorry, to mark this file as resolved. So that's one way you can do this directly from the editor on GitHub, or you can do this from VS Code. So I'll show you from VS Code as well. If I go back to Visual Studio Code here, uh, now what I can do is I can try to update my C2 branch with the main branch. So the way I'll typically do this is I'll go git checkout main, I'll pull main, which is going to give me the fixes so, or the updates. So now it's going to modify this file. And now I'm going to go git check checkout. And then in this case, it's C1. And now what I'll do is I will merge the main branch with this branch. And when I do that, you're going to see that I get a merge conflict happening here locally. I can then fix that and then re-push to GitHub and then everything will be okay. So what I'm going to do is go git and then this is going to be merge and I'm going to merge main. Now I could merge origin slash main, or I can just merge main. Now, if I do main, that's my local copy, which in this case is fine because I know that's up to date with my origin or my remote repository. 
Alternatively, if I knew it wasn't up to date, then I would just do origin slash main. In this case, they're both going to give me the same result. Origin slash main, by the way, of course, is the remote repository and then the version of the main branch on there. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter here and notice it says automatic merge failed, fix the conflicts and then commit the result. Now here we get some better kind of choices so we can accept the current change or the incoming change or both changes or alternatively, we can just manually update this file. Now for clarity here, the incoming change is what's coming from the remote repository or from the other branch. And then the current change is what you currently have on your current branch. So what I can do is accept the current change if I actually want to delete this line, then I'm gonna save. And then what I need to do is I need to commit the result. So I'm gonna fix the conflicts and commit the result. My file is already added into the staging area. So just type git commit hyphen M and then I say fix dot txt file conflicts. Okay, this is kind of my merge commit. Now I'm going to do that. Uh, and sorry, actually, I forgot I have to add this to the staging area. I thought it was already there. And then I commit. Okay, so now that I've made my commit here, what I can do is repush this. So I'm going to type git push origin Tim C1. And now that I repush this to the remote repository with the conflicts fixed. So we're going to go here. All right. Uh, I should be able to just merge this directly in. And you'll notice that now I have two commits. So I deleted the line and then I have what's referred to as a merge commit, which is what I made to merge the changes from the main branch onto my feature branch. So now when I uh, merge my feature branch back onto the main branch, the history is correct and everything is up to date. I know this can be a little bit confusing, but what I just did to fix the conflict was I essentially merge my branch with the main branch so that I integrated all of the changes from the main branch onto mine. I then from that point forward created the change I wanted to put on the main branch, which is what we've done by deleting the line. And now I'm able to merge this pull request in. Okay. I, again, I apologize. This stuff is not simple. Hence why this video is intermediate kind of GitHub topics, but that is how you go about fixing a merge conflict. Now, obviously the conflicts you can, you get can be much nastier than what I just showed you here. Uh, there is some more advanced tools that you can use to fix these. However, typically what you want to do to avoid getting too many conflicts is always be branching off of a clean version of the main repository. If you're doing that, or sorry, off the main branch, if you're doing that, you're going to limit the amount of conflicts conflicts that you have. Uh, and you know, once in a while, yes, you will get them. But what you need to do then is merge with the main branch. And then you'll have to manually go through and fix all of those conflicts. Once you fix them, then you can re push and then you'll be able to merge back into the repository. All right, so I've just moved to the drawing tablet here because I'm going to quickly explain to you the difference between a merge and a rebase, which are two popular commands to integrate changes from different branches that many developers don't actually understand. So it's helpful to view these visually. They're actually not overly complicated, but you just want to understand kind of the core difference between what a merge is doing uh, compared to a rebase. So let's just draw a simple example here of a Git history. So all of these circles are going to be commits uh, and this white branch here is going to be our main or our master branch. Now, let's say at some point in time, we decided we're going to start creating a feature and maybe we did that here. OK, so at this point, we decided to fork off and we created a new branch in this branch. Maybe we called something like C1. Now, obviously, that's a horrible name, but we decided to call it C1. There we go. We have our C1 feature branch. Now, let's say that we are here. And we decided at this point in time, okay, you know, we finished our feature. Now we want to actually kind of combine this or merge this into the code base. And there's a few different ways to go about doing this. We also may just want to update our current branch to integrate all of the changes from main. So let's put it, put it in that scenario. We want to update our current branch with all of the changes from main. So that way, when we continue working, we have an up to date code base. Everything's kind of, you know, updated nice and clean. And ideally we're going to kind of remove the riskiness or remove, sorry, the likelihood of having a conflict. Okay. So we want to take changes from here that have happened since we've been working on this branch and integrate them here. Obviously what's happened is since we've branched off, new code has been added to the main uh, branch. We want that code now in this branch. How do we get that? Well, the first command we can run is our merge. Now, when we decide to run a merge, what's going to happen is a new commit is going to be created. This is called our merge commit. And I'm going to put an asterisk here, which means it's new. Now, what this merge commit is going to do is it is going to essentially combine all of the changes since we branched off 
with the changes from this branch. So it's a brand new commit and it just combines, well, all of these different changes. Now, a conflict could occur here. If that's the case, we need to fix that. And then the kind of conflict fix will be involved in this merge commit. All right. So we create this merge commit. It essentially combines everything together. And now say I'm on my branch C1. If I were to continue to work, I would kind of add off of this merge commit. And there we go. Now I have all of the changes from my main branch and I'm continuing to work. Now, the advantage here of creating this merge commit is that I keep the entire history of my Git repo. What I mean by that is I know still all of these different commits. I know when I originally branched off and I know at what point in time I decided to do this merge. Now, the disadvantage is that this merge commit is very messy. Oftentimes it kind of messes up the history. You can see here now we have a non-linear history because we have different branches kind of being integrated together and it can make the history of the GitHub repository, well, just very messy, right? It's difficult for me if I'm reviewing this later on to understand if I should be looking down here, if I should be looking up here, if I'm looking after the merge commit, it just kind of complicates things a little bit when you're going back and review it, okay? So that's the disadvantage. But again, the advantage is you're retaining all of this history and you know everything that's occurred. You're not losing any information. You've just added this additional merge commit, which can make things a little bit messy. Now, one thing to note here is that since I've integrated main with my C1 branch, that doesn't mean that on my main branch, I now have my C1 changes. Only if I've actually made a pull request and kind of merged this into the main branch, am I gonna have that? If I were to locally check out the main branch now, as I continue to work, I'm gonna to continue to branch off of my main branch, and then later maybe I integrate the changes of C1. But what I've done is I've taken the changes from main and put those on my C1 branch, not the other way around. It's not gonna happen on both branches, it just happens on the branch you're currently on when you run the git rebase commit. Okay, now let's talk about merge. So I think actually it'll be easier if I just delete all of this, so let's erase all the ink. Okay. So now what happens when we do a rebase? Well, what a rebase is doing is taking essentially this entire branch here. So all of the code that we've uh, done, and it's just moving it to be at the tip of our main branch. So let's say I'm on C1, right? I want to integrate my main changes. Then all I do is I rebase it. And when I rebase it, it moves my branch over here. Now, obviously it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's essentially what's happening. Rather than creating a new commit here, which is a merge of these two branches together, I am simply taking all of this code or all of these commits, sorry, from this branch, and I'm moving them so that now they're gonna be attached at the head of my main branch or whatever branch I am merging, or sorry, rebasing uh, with my what do you call it, feature branch. Now, what actually happens here is this, right? So this new branch is gonna contain entirely new commits. So all the asterisks are just new commits. What happens is my original branch, which I can kind of do uh, like this. So my original commits are gonna be copied and added to the head. So I'm not taking the same commit. I'm actually kind of copying them and turning them into a brand new commit and then attaching them to the head of whatever branch I'm rebasing with. Now, the reason why this is nice is that we no longer have a merge commit and our history is fully linear. So now it's very easy for me if I'm reviewing this later on to understand that, okay, I just go from here, 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 down to here. I don't have this kind of fork in the road where I have this merge commit that's combining the two different branches. I have a full linear history. The disadvantage of doing this is that I lost all of the history that I previously had when I decided to branch off. So again, we originally had branched here, and if we had done a merge, we would have known that we branched here. We would have known all the commits that were on this branch versus here. Now, when I do the rebase, it becomes unclear. I lose that history, and instead I kind of trade that for this straight linear history. So you might be asking yourself now, okay, I understand, you know, rebase is essentially attaching to the head. And what actually occurs here is we apply every single one of the commits that are on our branch to this branch, right? So we're really just tacking them on. That's all that's happening. And these become new commits. But you might be asking yourself, well, when do I use which, right? When do I use rebase versus when do I use merge? Well, the golden rule here is that you never want to use a rebase on a public branch. Now, what I mean by a public branch is a branch that someone else could potentially be working on. 
The reason you don't want to do that is because if someone else has a copy of the branch that looks like this, and then you rebase and you push that branch, when they pull this, they're going to get all kinds of conflicts and they're going to have a completely different version of the branch locally than what you've pushed. So you've now moved every single one of your commits over to the head of the main branch where theirs are still forked off and have not been rebased. And when they decide to do a pull, uh, there's just kind of, you know, like a mini disaster that's going to occur. So essentially it's referred to as the golden rule of rebase is you never use this on a public branch, which is a branch that anyone else could be um, kind of using. Now, this is a little confusing because if I have a local branch, it's fine for me if I'm working on kind of a local feature branch to rebase that branch against my main branch. It's fine for me to put my C1 branch like it is right now because I'm the only one working on this C1 branch. I can fix all of the conflicts and then I'm going to push that up to Git. I'm going to have my nice clean history. I can then merge that in to my main branch and then anyone else can simply pull the main branch which will have its nice clean linear history and then allow uh allow them sorry to just continue working so the simple summary here on when to use rebase is when you're working on a private branch so that means pretty much only you are working on the branch and you're trying to update essentially the state of your branch to match the state of a remote branch or some other branch you can use rebase However, if you're working on any kind of public branch, then instead you're going to want to use merge so that you don't lose any history and you're not going to mess anyone else up that is using that same branch. So just remember those two rules. If it is a public branch, then you use merge. If it is your own private branch, then you are fine to use the rebase command. All right, so I've switched back to the computer and for this next section in the video, what I'm going to show you is how to check out and modify an existing branch from GitHub that is not the main branch. So you can see here that I've created a new branch called Tech with Tim patch one. I've made a pull request using this branch. And let's say that now I'm a new developer. I'm looking at this code and I want to modify this branch. So maybe I want to push directly to this pull request uh, or I just want to get access to the branch, whatever I want it from this remote repository. How do I get this? Well, let's go to my local GitHub repo here. And first I'm going to type git branch. Notice I don't have this branch. Even if I type git pull, and this will actually give me all of the branches, by the way, from the uh, remote repository, if I didn't already have them, even when I type this and I type git branch again, it's not going to show me this branch. Now there is a way to view these kind of remote branches. However, if you know the name of the branch and you just want to directly go to the state of that branch, uh, then what you can do is the following. You can type git checkout, and then you can just put the name of the branch. In this case, it's going to be tech with Tim patch one. Now notice that I haven't put hyphen B. I didn't put origin. I didn't put anything special. I'm not creating a new branch. I'm checking out a branch that exists on the remote repository. So since I know the name, I'm just going to put it here. And when I hit enter, it's going to say switch to a new branch. So it automatically creates one for me. And this branch is tracking the remote repo. Now, what that means is that I'm going to have the same state as the remote repository branch at the time that I ran this code. And now any changes that I make are happening locally and I can then push them to the remote repository. So let's say I go here and create a new file. Okay, new file.txt, uh, new text. All right, perfect. I can now type git add dot, git commit hyphen m, create file. And then I can push this now to the remote repository. So I'm gonna type git push origin tech with Tim dash patch dash one. Okay. I do that. I'm now able to push my code. I go here and refresh and notice that I've added this new commit to this branch. Okay. So that's something you can do fully valid. I just wanted to show you that's how you do it. You check out the branch name. It's then going to essentially track that branch from the remote repository. If the branch exists on the remote repository, and then you have that state and then you can do whatever you want. Now, similarly, someone else may change something on this branch, right? So you go to tech with Tim patch one, maybe they go to feature, uh, go here and they edit this and they say another line. Okay. So let's do this. Commit changes. Uh, I'm just going to commit uh, directly commit that to the branch. Okay. Now I'm here and you'll see that I don't have these changes. So if I want to get those changes, then I can type git pull. Now, what might happen is I could maybe potentially have a conflict here, right? So like I edit this line and then I type get add dot, git commit hyphen M 
okay i don't know fix whatever i'm just doing random commit messages and then i try to push this again git push origin i should already have this command okay so you can see here when i ran this command that now i'm getting an error message and it's saying the updates were rejected because the remote uh contains work that you do not have locally this is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same ref you may want to first integrate the remote changes with git pull before pushing again so i'm just going to clear here and what i can do is type git pull and this will be connected to that branch so when i type git pull it will automatically pull those changes and then what i'll need to do is fix the conflict because i have edited the same line so i'm just going to accept the current change here and then i would go git add dot git commit hyphen m fix conflict okay and now i can go git push origin tech with tim dash patch dash one and now i'm able to push these changes because i have integrated them with the remote repository all right so continuing here i'm now going to show you how you can use the cherry pick command and how you can reset your git branches and state now these are more advanced commands so you want to actually know what you're doing when you're using them uh they're not overly complicated but they can mess things up quite badly if you don't know what you're doing so just kind of be careful with these commands uh, if you are using them in your own github repository anyways first command i want to show you is the cherry pick command which is extremely useful when you have a few commands or just one commit that you want to apply onto a different branch so let's say i'm doing a ton of work on a feature branch all of a sudden i come up with a pretty critical bug fix and i fix that in one commit now my feature isn't finished but my feature branch contains the bug fix so rather than me trying to finish the feature branch really quickly or trying to kind of uh, submit a half finished feature what i would do instead is i would simply cherry pick this commit off onto a new branch and then i would push that new branch to github and merge that with my main branch so that i got the bug fix in immediately but i could still continue to work on my feature branch without pushing that kind of prematurely so this just allows you to take any work you do in a commit and apply it anywhere else use it however you see fit uh, but it's a useful command so i want to show you how it works now when i uh, kind of frequently use this command is when i accidentally make a commit on the wrong branch and then i want to move it to another one so let's say that i create this new feature branch okay and i'm going to do all kinds of work on this feature branch blah 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 but in the meantime i check out the main branch and i pull it just to make sure i'm up to date okay great i'm up to date next day comes along all of a sudden i come to my git repository and i'm like all right i'm gonna start doing my work and i forget that i'm on this main branch so i do my work i add my critical file here and i add my commit so i go git add dot git commit hyphen m add python file and all of a sudden i see main and i go oh no i've made a mistake what do i do now well not to worry we can use the cherry pick command so first of all i don't want this on the main branch so i want to get rid of it from the main branch but i want the work still and i need to move that to another branch so i'm going to type git log and i'm going to look at the commit hash so this is the hash of the commit that i just made there might be multiple commits by the way that you want to move over in that case you're just going to repeat this process but i grab the hash of the commit that i want to move so i'm going to copy that i'm going to quit here I'm going to check out the branch I want to move it to. So git checkout, in this case, feature. And then I'm going to type git cherry pick. And I'm going to paste the hash. And I'm going to cherry pick this commit over to this new branch. So easy as that, I've now moved this commit over. And if I go back to main now, okay, you see that I still have the code here. So I haven't removed it from main, but I took the commit and I applied it onto the feature branch. So now kind of step one of my problem is done. I've saved this code. I moved it over to a new branch where it's supposed to be, but now I need to get rid of it from this main branch. So there's a few ways that I can get rid of it. First of all, I can just revert back by one commit. Second of all, I can actually reset uh, to the state of my remote repository. So I'm going to show you a few different ways to do it. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is what I will typically use because I always want my main branch to be up to date with the remote repository main branch. So if that's the case, if that's all you care about, you just want to be completely up to date, you don't have any work on the main branch that you care about losing, then what you're going to do is type this. Git reset hyphen hyphen hard. This is a dangerous command. I'm going to explain this, but be careful when you use this. And then origin slash main. 
Now, what this means is I'm going to reset my current branch to essentially just match origin main. Now, what this dash dash hard means is that I'm going to reset the working tree as well as the git index. Uh, that essentially means that any files that I've worked on, but I haven't committed yet, uh, those are going to be deleted. So if I've added them into the staging area, like they're currently being tracked by Git, they're going to get deleted. Now I can kind of prove that to you. If I create a file txt or text.txt, okay, I go here and I just add it. All right, so I've added it to the staging area, but I haven't deleted it. Now, if I run git reset dash dash hard origin main, you're going to see that that file gets deleted. So that's what happens when you do hard. All right. Now, if you do soft, which is the next one, so let me show you this. If I create a new file, text.txt, uh, the same thing's gonna happen, but it's gonna keep any that are in the staging area. So if I go here and I add this into stage changes, now if I go git reset dash dash soft, then what it's gonna do is it's gonna keep this text file. It's not gonna delete it because I did a soft reset, which means yes, the entire like git history, this branch got resetted, uh, or got resetted, sorry, got reset, but I keep any files that were in my staging area. There's a few other options you can use here when it comes to resetting. Typically, I just use hard and that will essentially do a clean kind of reset for you, get rid of any changes and just make sure that your branch is up to date with the remote repository. Again, a slightly dangerous command, but something that I would keep in mind. So with that said, I'm going to start wrapping up this video. As a reminder, on May 9th, I'm teaming up with Microsoft to host a 45 minute long webinar as a part of the Developer Digital Meetup Tour. This webinar will go much more in depth on Git and GitHub, talk about best practices, advanced developer workflows, and also discuss VS Code, GitHub Actions, and many more topics. If you want to register for that, you can go to aka.ms slash techwithtim. And if you are watching this video after May 9th, you can still click that link from the description to access the recording. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in another one.